My name is Mary McKinley, and I am the Public Outreach Program Coordinator for the Greene County Records Center and Archives. And I'm here with Becky. Would you like to introduce yourself? I'm Becky Rubin, and um, I was in the Zenith Tornado in 1974, so happy to be here and give you some of the recollections. So, where did you grow up? I grew up in Terre Haute, Indiana. Um, moved there when I was 10. My dad was in the Marine Corps, so we traveled quite a bit. We lived in Hawaii, where I was born, um, North Carolina, where my sister was born, California, where my brother was born, um, but my parents had a home in Terre Haute, and after my father retired, we moved back there. Can you tell me a little bit about your experiences in Xenia before the tornado? Well, yeah, we moved to Xenia in 1970, and um, our son was two years old at that time. Um, my experience was basically I was home with the children. Um, we lived in an apartment. We actually lived at the Kinsey Village Apartments when we first moved there. Um, and then we moved to uh, a home on Galloway Street. We rented the lower half of a old home on Galloway Street. And then we bought our first house where the tornado hit. And it was at 533 South Stadium Drive. So mostly I was taking care of children. Um, neighbor kids came to play and I did a lot of gardening, which is what I was doing the day of the tornado. So you said your son was two. Um, yes. How old were your children? Other children. Um, by the time the tornado hit, our daughter was two and our son was five at that time. Mm -hmm. Can you walk me through what happened that day, starting in the morning? Sure. Um, I know I was outside probably starting to get flower beds ready. It was in the front yard. Um, I don't remember what we were doing in the morning, but mostly in the afternoon I was in the front yard. And um, the kids were inside playing, watching TV. Um, and everybody probably knows this, but there was no tornado siren at that point. So there was actually no warning that which would have come on the television uh, about a tornado in Xenia. So I was, I was just outside in the afternoon. I had um, a chicken in the oven baking. Um, as I was gardening, I could see that the weather was very different that day. It was warm, it was cloudy, it started, it was kind of a rainy day, it was up and down. It was a real humid day for early April. And, um, my best recollection is that I knew it just felt odd and I knew something was going on and I remember just kind of glancing at the sky and seeing um, this huge uh, cloud, dark cloud um, coming down the street, uh, up the street because we're, we were in Stadium Heights and um, that's on a small hill. So, um, as I recall, I just sort of knew that it was a tornado because it was absolutely huge. And I was in the front yard. A neighbor came out from across the street. Um, his name was Steve Neff. He was probably, I thought he was an older man, but now that I'm older, <laughs> my guess is Steve was around 50. Um, he sort of stood there looking at it, and I felt like he was in shock to tell you the truth. So I told him, I said, Steve, we need to get in the house and we need to go to our basement. So we had a basement. And I gathered up the kids and Steve and the kids and I were in the basement and it hit. Um, and it was a long time of a train going over our heads. Uh, I could hear a lot of things smashing outside. Um, we stayed there for a very long time until we thought it was over 
and then got up, went outside. Steve went across to his house, which was no longer. Um, and um, when we got outside, it was pretty much everything around us, except for our house and the two, one on each side of us, that were left. The rest of the area was flattened. So that was the day until um, we were talking about this on the way here. I think my husband, Dave, um, taught at Central State University, was teaching at the time. Um, he'll tell you about his experience, but because they were hit there, he had no car. We lost our car uh, in the woods beside, behind Central State. So we caught a ride in, and he walked the rest of the way up and came to the bottom of the hill and thought, well, you know, look at this. Um, and I just remember, I think he got home probably between six and seven, and we, we knew that, um, you know, we just had to deal with downed wires and um, no place to sleep. I think that night we may have gone to the Y, I'm not sure. We, we had friends that we stayed with for mostly three weeks until we could get the house back in order a little bit. That was the day, so. So what, when you were in the basement, mm -hmm. um, how, how were your children acting? You know, it's I, I don't think they knew to be scared. I mean, they were so young. Um, I just, I think we just talked about we need to sit here and be quiet and wait until the storm goes over. I don't even remember what I told them. I do know that after it was all over with, um, the kids had a playroom downstairs and uh, our daughter Beth would not um, return to the basement at all. So uh, it took her three months, I think, before she would go back downstairs and play. So she really had a vivid memory of it. I think Bobby was okay with it. I don't remember um, if he didn't want to go downstairs, but I know Beth just pretty much refused, so. Yeah, so we had, um, we did not lose our house. We had siding that needed to be replaced, some window and roof damage, um, a shed in back of the house that was a, a little toy shed for the kids. Um, that was gone, but their toys were sitting right there, so it picked up the shed and left the toys. Um, I think, for the most part, there were just people in our neighborhood who were really stunned that their houses were gone. I have a recollection of a woman who was very, very traumatized by it. Um, I don't remember her name, and I don't remember exactly where she lived, but pretty much the rest of us were, were walking around and waiting for the Red Cross to come by to tell us where to go for food, which was at the Y. We walked to the Y for food. We um, Health department came around with vaccinations. We had to get a tetanus shot and a typhoid shot. And for the most part, we, my parents came over the day or two after the tornado. Um, my dad looked at it and said he thought it was a war zone because it looked like it. They went home with my parents for three weeks so that we could stay there, clean up. Um, we had a friend who had a um, pump that we could pump the uh, basement with the water out of the basement. Um, that's kind of our routine for three weeks. Wow. Yeah. You described some of the noises you were hearing yeah. when you were downstairs. Mm -hmm. Do you remember at all what you were thinking as it was happening? Oh yeah, I was thinking we didn't have a house left. Yeah, I was thinking there was going to be a lot of damage because it was such a huge thing. I mean, this was, it's hard to explain because it didn't look like a funnel. It just looked massive, but you knew what it was. It was just a lot of debris flying around. Um, and I think I, I didn't know, I didn't know where Dave was. That was the other thing. Um, certainly wondered, you know, 
was everything gone or what it, what it was going to look like outside. Um, and then I looked at the clock because the stove went off and it was something like 410 or 440 and the chicken was still in the oven. There you go. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, a lot of mixed feelings. Um, I think at the time it was pretty darn frightening. It took a long time afterwards for several years not to think about tornadoes and it, where are we going to get another one. And we're still very vigilant about it. If there's, gonna, if there's a tornado warning, we are now down in our basement, which is in a different home. But um, we're there, and I call the kids all the time, tornado warning, get in the basement. I mean, you know, they're now 55 and 52, and I'm calling them. <laughs> That's what you do. So you said it was about three weeks that your children were elsewhere yeah. and um, that you were kind of recovering. Mm -hmm. What kinds of things did you do to get the house back in order? We had some glass to clean up. We had to clean up the yard. Um, the insurance company, wait on the insurance company to come. Um, I thought I would say this just because it probably is something that has bugged me for years about it, but insurance companies at that time, um, I don't think were real great. So um, we lost damage. We had a lot of damage on the siding of our house. Those houses were probably built in the 50s or 60s. So this was 1974. By that time, the siding was, you know, not in the best shape anyway. Not great. I mean, it was old. So they came out and said, well, you know, we'll replace three sides of your home. And let me tell you, I was pretty honked. So <laughs> I could say a different word, but I won't. Um, <laughs> and um, that that's what happened to us. I don't know what happened to other people. Um, I just thought it was pretty bad that if you if you've got your house that damaged, that they wouldn't replace all four sides. And it was all state insurance, by the way. So if anybody has all state, there you go. Um, what else did we do? Um, we spent a lot of time, not a lot of time, but anything that we had to do as far as food was concerned was basically the lot. And it was, I mean, we had a lot of people come in and, and help with that. There were um, a group of Mennonites who had come in and they were helping to clean up the neighborhood. So I, I remember seeing them behind our house uh, in, an, in another section um, of Stadium Heights. And pretty much keeping the basement, Dave especially was keeping the basement pumped out of water. Um, just a lot of waiting until we could get repair done. We had to find another car and that was tough because cars were really hard to come by then. So, um, yeah, I think mostly clean up, taking care of ourselves. I'm sure we probably helped neighbors. I don't remember a lot of that, but um, checking in with the kids when we could because it was three weeks that they were gone and it, that was a long time. So, um, it was a busy day, busy three weeks. I'm sure. Yeah. You mentioned the water in the basement. Was uh -huh. that from a broken pipe or from but a weather? sump pump? And so the sump pump went off. The electricity was off, so mm -hmm. all the water was starting to come up. Yeah, yeah. It's just you know, when you have something like that, it all goes. Yeah. So that was pretty much what we spent our time doing. How were any of your local friends and family affected? Did you notice any differences among where they were living at the time? Um, hmm. I think everyone was just in shock, to tell you the truth. Um, luckily, the neighbors that we, we spent the night with um, were not hit by the tornado. We also had friends in Yellow Springs, as I recall, who probably put us up for a, a night or two or had food ready or something. I think everybody was just trying to gather up things and um, as far as I know, no one in our neighborhood was killed. 
Um, but then when we found that out, it was pretty horrifying. Didn't realize how bad it was until we found out that there were so many people who had died. So I think it was the number was about 35. So yeah, um, I think it's with anything. The days are spent just trying to see what you have left. I mean, we, we didn't lose things inside our house. That was pretty lucky, but we had just the damage outside. Other people had everything gone, so it was pretty hard to see. How long did it take you to realize the scope of what had just happened? Um, gosh, I don't know. Probably a few days. I know maybe the first time this I realized the scope was actually when I saw um, my parents and, and they had come up and tried to get in and it finally did get up the hill to get the kids. I mean, after my dad made that comment, I think driving in, he had seen a lot of damage that we didn't because we weren't, you know, down the hill looking at everything. So maybe that first day, I know it was pretty bad, but probably it may have taken several days later to realize how bad it was. So, yeah, it's pretty, pretty horrifying when you realize it. Yeah. What do you think have been the long-term effects of the tornado? Well, I think after 50 years, you know, you, you remember it, but it's not, um, it's not as scary as it was, but I am always, always nervous when the weather gets bad. And I listen for tornado warnings. Luckily now, you know, you get warnings on your phone, your TV, your whatever you've got on. Um, so I'm just, I'm always aware. Uh, I don't ever want to have to go through one again. And um, I think we're kind of lucky that we haven't. I mean, we've had, you know, we certainly had more tornadoes after that. Um, but I'm just, I'm just very aware of my surroundings, where I am where my family is, it's at that probably will never leave. Do you think there were any changes to Greene County as a whole, or Xenia as a whole because of this? Oh yeah, Dave and I talked about this before we came in. Um, it's in a way, I mean, I think that the city at that time was just in a state of what do we do now? Um, Looking back, I think what we should have done, and but I wasn't in any position to make a decision about this, but what we should have done was really recreate the historic area of Xenia, the downtown area especially. Um, however, that was the time when so many malls were put in and um, when all of the shopping malls went in, I, I think everybody thought, wow, that's really great. And it seems like now that's what we're left with, with empty shopping malls and a town that was once a very historic town and now does not look the same at all. I'd love to see that back again, but money was an issue and that was that was probably part of the problem. And you know, it was 1970, things were different then. People were building shopping malls and that was the place to shop and uh, the place to get everything. But now that we're much older, and we look back and think, mm, historic would have been nice. So. You said your son was about five at the time? He was five. Mm -hmm. Was he in kindergarten about, was he in school at that time? Um, we had, um, both our children were at the, um, did some preschool at the uh, Yale Springs Community Children's Center. And I worked there as the secretary for a while. Let's see, was he in kindergarten at the time? Hmm. Must have been, but I don't even remember that. I guess so. Do you remember, uh, you know, they were with, with, their, with their grandparents for yes. three weeks. Um, when Do you know when they were able to kind of get back to their routine? You know, what that process was like? Hmm. Good question. I think... I think we tried to get them back into the routine as quickly as we could. I mean, there was a lot of 
oh my gosh, hugging and everything else when they came back because it was three weeks. Beth was pretty upset about being gone. I mean, uh, they, they had a great time, though, you know, with their grandparents, of course. But I think we try to get things back, as much back to normal as possible. My dad, um, well, I don't know if he did. We, have, we had a new shed in back put in. Um, I think mostly it was just really trying to get back with their friends and um, family members, uh, I mean, Dave and I. But, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of that I don't really recall, to tell you the truth. It's kind of like, left me. Are there any other details you remember that you want to share? Any other particulars? Um... No, I think it just took a while to sink in that we were pretty lucky, um, that we didn't lose everything. Um, I, we were, Dave will tell you his story, but we were lucky that, you know, um, he got home from Central State and didn't get injured. So I think it was a feeling of, let's hope this doesn't happen again. It kind of did happen that night again. I know Dave in particular thought we had a, another tornado go over. We spent the night in the basement, of course. Um, but I think in general, we just, it's a lot different when you're, I was 26 at the time. Um, it's a lot different 50 years later when you think, okay, this would be horrendous now. It's horrendous then, but you're younger, you survive it, and you move on.